Hey guys, welcome to Unity Tips. In this episode, we're going to look at gizmos and how we can use them in our projects. So first of all, what is a gizmo? Well, if I look at my scene here and I select an object, I get this little thing that pops up. It's a 3D object in my scene that has these handles on it that I can move around and it actually affects the object. Now gizmos don't have to have a functionality. They don't have to do things. They can just be visual representations of objects in your scenes. And that's what we're going to be doing today. But this is a gizmo. Then if I were to change it to a rotation control, this is a rotation gizmo. You've also got a scale gizmo and so on. So they're just different types of gizmos. Now if I look at this icon here, this is also a gizmo. It's an icon that's just drawn in my scene to show me where my lights are. The two uh, directional lights that I have here. Same goes for this spotlight here. And again, any object I select shows me the transform gizmo right on the object there. So one thing I want to point out is in my field here, I have a bunch of monster spawners that are responsible for spawning enemies in my world. I just assign a value to them. They handle the rest. They handle the respawning and all that stuff. So I just spread these things throughout my game world and it's responsible for handling the rest. But the problem is, I don't see them. I don't know where they are. I can't click on them because I don't see them. All they are are they're empty objects with a spawner component on them. So if I look at one of them really quickly, I have a spawner here. And it simply has a spawner component and a transform component. Now, I don't know where this is. Obviously, I can look right here and see that the transform component shows me now that it's selected. But the problem with that is I have to have it selected to see the transform component. Same goes for the other spawners out through here. They are there. I can't click on them. I don't know where they are. I can't do anything with them. I have to select them in my hierarchy first, and then I can go along and, and affect them however I'd like. So what I want to do is I want to add a gizmo to these that, that they're objects that will be displayed in the scene view, but not in my game view. They're just there for me when I'm making my levels, when I'm playing around with my objects, so I can see where they are. I can click on them and interact with them. And they're just going to be objects that represent where the object is in my world nothing more than that so to do this i first want to go to my spawner object here this is it and we're going to do it directly on the spawner object to do this we'll have another method down here i'm going to make a void method that's going to be called on draw gizmos and there's another method we'll look at here in just a second that allows us to change the functionality a bit now on draw gizmos, we can do a lot with this. We're obviously going to keep it very simple for this type of video. What we're going to do is we're going to decide on a color and then we're going to draw some meshes in our scene view. So I want to go through the gizmos class here and I want to set a color and I want to set it to be equal color dot red. Now all this does is sets the color that these gizmos will be drawn in. And I'm using a predefined color of red. There's a bunch of these you can look at or you can create your own using RGB just like you normally would. So now anything that I add after this, they will be of the color red. Cool, makes sense. So what I wanna do is I wanna go through gizmos and I wanna type in draw. And now this shows me all the things I can draw. Now this is pretty cool, right? So what I can do is I can simply draw a cube and that's gonna draw a cube at a position that I tell it and also at a scale that I give it. So the cube is gonna be at the position of, of this object, right, of this spawner because this spawner uh, component is on all of my spawners. So I want to draw it at the position of this spawner. And then I want the size. It's a vector 3. So I'll make a new vector 3. And I could define it as 111 if I want. Or I can just say vector 3.1. And that'll give me a vector 3 of 111. So now in my scene view, I will have a red cube drawn on all of my spawners. Let's have a look. There we go. Now I have, as you can see, red cubes spread throughout my field. I've done nothing other than tell it to draw these in the scene view. Now in my game view, I can't tell based on this, but if I grab my player because I have a script that follows a player even in edit mode and drag him over here, you can see that there's no red cubes, right? It only happens in the editor in the scene view. It's only for laying out my levels and giving me an idea of where things are. Pretty cool. But another cool thing about this is I can actually select these gizmos now. I can just click on them. 
They act as objects that I can interact with. So I don't have to go through and find the correct one in my hierarchy now. I just click on the gizmo I want, and then I can move it around. Place it wherever I want in my scene view. And if I create more of these, I have just another one, just like that. Now I have all these vampires and things. And I can also change the color up where I have, let's say, a new color, 32 here. Let's make an orange here, uh, 255, uh, 120, 20. And then we'll lower the alpha a bit to about 170. I think it's going to be about, a, about an orange. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> so it's uh, transparent orange now. So if I move this in front of this cube, you can see right through it. So that's kind of cool. I can also draw a wire mesh cube. Draw a wire cube. And now we have these wire cubes that represent where my spawners are in the world. Pretty cool. And you can obviously change the size of these by defining your own vector three. Say I want them to be flat. There we go. Two units and then one unit tall. Pretty cool. Now for the wire sphere or just the regular sphere, I have to define a scale unit that is a, or a radius unit that is a float. So we can say 2F or 1F. Doesn't require a vector because obviously it is a circular object. And it will actually draw both of these gizmos because I've defined both of them. There we go, now we have both gizmos. And this would be a cool way to define, say you have an area that would aggro the player or an area of a sound effect or an area of effect of any kind. You can use this to show in your scene view, this is where the effect happens. And it will help you with laying out your levels to know quickly where you can place things and how they will work in your game. And I also want to show you that you can draw any mesh. You don't have to draw these predefined meshes. We can use any mesh from our game. We can create a mesh just for this. Let's say we have these spawners and I want the spawner, the gizmo to be like some enemy looking thing. It's like a generic looking enemy. This just shows that this is where enemies spawn. Now I don't have a, a model like that, but I can show you how we can quickly assign a model to this and I'll use one to represent that this is a spawner. I'll create a private field that is a mesh type and I'll call it uh, spawner mesh. And then what I can do is go down to gizmos dot draw mesh and I'll pass it the spawner mesh. And now I want to find a uh, C. What can we do here? We can have one that has a position, rotation and the scale. So I want to do that so I can control the scale myself because the mesh I want to use is going to be rather large by default. So I'll have this be a vector, or sorry, it's going to be a transform dot position, quaternion dot identity, just a default rotation. And then for the scale, I will just take the vector one, or sorry, vector three dot one again. And that's going to be one, 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 right on the scale, which is fine. But I want about half that size, so I'm going to multiply it by 0.5 to get a vector of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Also, this is a private field. So what I wanna do is I wanna assign this mesh in the inspector. So to allow that, I'll just add an attribute that is serialized field that allows the serializer to expose that to the inspector. Now I have this field here, I wanna select this and I have all these meshes in my game. We'll select this uh, checkers, this red checker from the game of checkers. Open that up and I'll use that to draw my gizmos in my scene. So now if I look at the one that I assigned that to, I have a big orange checker sitting in my game world now, or at least in my scene view. And what I can do is, since these aren't prefabs, I'd have to apply it to all of them. So I'm just gonna take, get rid of all my vampire spawners, I'm going to assign this mesh, and then assign the mesh for this one as well. And I'm just gonna bring these out and duplicate them around here. And now you can see our spawners in the world that look like these checkers. Which, you know, whatever, it's kind of a cool way to, uh, kind of a cool token to show that's where they'll spawn. And now if I get rid of, I can get rid of the sphere and the wire cube, and all I'll have is the checker mesh. And that's pretty cool. So another thing, these spawners have a reference to the monster game object. It's a prefab of the monster that has all the components that it needs on that, right? So it has a reference to, if it needed it, the mesh of that monster. So if I assign a monster to this spawner, then it can easily use that to represent what, what monster is spawning in our scene view. 
And to get a look at that, what I'll do is I will go ahead and remove this uh, multiplication of 0.5 there because I want it to be full scale. And I want to just reference the component, the mesh filter component on that prefab. So I will go through monster, which is my monster field that I assign the prefab to. And I'll do get component, looking for the mesh filter component. That's the component that you assign the mesh to and it handles all of that crazy stuff for you. Then I'll actually go to the field that is shared mesh. We can't use mesh because this is a, uh, a prefab that is just referencing a mesh and all the prefabs reference the same mesh. So we're using the shared mesh, shared mesh field here for that. Now, if I go back into Unity, we see that they're, they're now all cubes. And that's because in my game, all my enemies are currently just cubes, the default cube mesh. And they all reference the same default cube mesh. So they all look the same, right? But what I can do is I can go to my vampire prefab and I can change the mesh on the mesh filter to be something else that will show me that this is in fact different. So I can take make the vampire, we'll say the vampires are, what do we want them to be? You can see it changing immediately, right? How cool is that? So I wanna change the vampire to be, uh, let's make it a cactus. They're rather large cactuses, cacti. Uh, <laughs> but you get the point. Let's find something smaller, maybe. Maybe a, a bush. Uh, oh, goodness. No, for fun, we'll make them cylinders. <laughs> to keep it simple, we'll make them cylinders because we have some scaling issues there. So now my vampires are cylinders, and my, my slime here is just the standard cube, right? So now if I just change, I want, I want to say this vampire, this spawner no longer spawns a vampire, it'll in fact spawn a slime. And I add slime there, watch what happens. Boom, that vampire, now the gizmo shows a slime model. Now, if you have more advanced models that actually represent the enemy, this would be cool to show you. Another quick thing I want to show you is if I change this method to on draw gizmos selected, it changes the functionality in the sense that now I have to select the object in order to see the gizmo. And this works like the transform component gizmo where it's not always visible, right? You have to select the object and then you get that gizmo. So now the one I have selected has the gizmo shown there. Select this one, wherever it is. You see the vampire gizmo and so on. So that's how you would do that. And last but not least, I wanna show you how you can draw icons in your, uh, in your scene view here. Kind of like if I go over to my light object here, you have this icon drawn in the scene. Mine's not gonna be this pretty, but it's gonna function the same. And these icons are selectable, so you can actually select the object because the light isn't a physical object, right? It's just these, these rays drawn in the scene, which you can also draw rays in the scene by using gizmos.drawray, as well as lines, gizmo.drawline. Lots of things you can do with this, but uh, we're keeping it simple and just going over some cool things with it. So now to access these icons, I wanna first add the icons to my project. I'm gonna go to Assets, Create, Folder. These have to go in a folder called Gizmos. It's a unique special folder that Unity uses to access gizmo related things, in this case, an icon. And I have an icon I made here on uh, gameicons.net. And I'm just gonna drag this over, add it to my gizmos folder. And there it is, select it, change it to Sprite 2D and UI and apply. Now to draw this, what I'll do, let's go through gizmos, dot draw icon, transform dot position again, center at the position. And then the name of the icon, because it already has access to the folder, all it needs is the name of the icon you're looking for. So the name of the icon for me is portal.png. Uh, now go back into Unity. Okay, so we don't see anything in the scene. It's because it's set to on select only. So if I select the vampire spawner and I go up here on it, you can see I have an icon drawn in the scene that is this portal that I'm, I'm thinking is like, uh, this is a spawner, it's a teleportation device of some sort. They're spawning from somewhere. That was the idea behind it. And uh, what I wanna do then is I can also set this to be scalable, which means now if I go in and I turn off 3D icons, 
Notice it stays the same size in my screen. Turn it on. I can zoom in and zoom out on it just like I would an object. But I can also scale it. Scale it down, scale it up. Pretty cool, right? Also, if I don't want these in scene, I'm working on something, they're, they're in the way, I could just toggle it off here because it added spawner, it added that component to this list of scripts that has, uh, has a gizmo on it. And notice what it's doing. All it's doing is collapsing the component over here. So if I collapse it myself, so now if I go back and take off selected, now we see all of my gizmos and all my icons, and you probably would not use them in this way, right? But it shows you how you could use icons in your game. Pretty cool. Hope you guys like this. Hope you are excited about more Unity Tips episodes. Have any ideas for some, please let me know in the comments below, and I'd be happy to think about what I could do with your ideas. Because I like this idea, I like this series, and I hope you guys do too. If you do like the series and you want to support the series, please consider pledging to the Patreon campaign, patreon.com slash gamegrind. Exclusive video tutorials over there, similar to this, but shorter and a bit more raw. Also, assets on the asset store. Links in the description, guys. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.